In today's episode of Locked On NBA, I'm going to be speaking with Ku Khalil of the Locked On Pistons podcast about Cade Cunningham finally becoming a member of the Detroit Pistons. Let's get stuck into it. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey guys, and welcome back to another show. Locked On NBA here. I'm your host, Josh Lloyd, and we're going to talk in a sec to Ku Khalil of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Before I do that, today's show is brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever, and they celebrate your freedom of choice by offering you nine delicious flavors. Plus, they bring out limited edition flavors all the time, which are awesome as well. Coconut, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, strawberry, orange. That's just a selection of the flavors available at Built Bar. But if you don't know what your favorite flavor is, grab yourself a mixed box, 18 bars, nine flavors, two of each bar, and you get to find out which one your favorite actually is. But not only are they the best tasting protein bars ever, they're healthy too. Check out the macro, 17 to 18 grams of protein, only four to five grams of sugar. The calories ranging from 130 to 180 and only four to five grams of net carbs. Amazing flavors, all tasty and all healthy. Built Bar is also the official protein bar of the US track and field team. Go to built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your order. The promo code is LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. So let's bring in Ku Khalil now, the host of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Let's start with the big news, the obvious stuff here in Detroit, Ku, and that is that Cade Cunningham is now a member of the Detroit Pistons. You sort of knew it was coming. There were a few you know, misdirections and fake outs about that happening. But uh, is there any sense of relief that the Pistons actually did go out there and, uh, and call Cade's name? Oh, yeah, it definitely was a big relief. I mean, obviously, I think everyone in Detroit is very happy and very excited about Cade joining the Pistons. But, yeah, definitely it was a big relief. I think a lot of fans, including myself, was like just hosting the podcast. It was getting a little tiring having to talk about the same old rumors and speculation that nobody really bought but you had to talk about and like at least pay a little bit of attention to because it was out there. But so, yeah, I think it was definitely a relief for the Pistons fans and me myself to, to hear Cade's name finally named. Now, you know, we, we've heard talk, again, there was talk of other guys. I mean, Jalen Green's in the mix. Maybe it's Evan Mobley having this great workout with Detroit. But in terms of what the Pistons are getting here with Cade, yeah, how is how, how are you viewing this? Is this yeah, generational type talent? Is a franchise changing sort of moment? Yeah, I think it definitely 100% is a franchise-altering moment. Um, the Pistons, I mean, just talking about first picks in general, they haven't had one in 50 years. They've never moved up with their own pick. So simply that in and of itself was like a once-in-a-lifetime type of thing. That was already like pretty big for the for the fan base and the, and the team. But then also just getting a player like Cade that I believe is going to be their franchise guy now. I mean, I've said this multiple times on my podcast, other podcasts, but if you even look at the last year's playoffs, you see a bunch of Piston players that were good third guys, second guys, uh, role players, off the bench guys. Like you see all kinds of former Pistons that were filling that type of role. But that just lets you know the Pistons were good at getting those type of guys. They just were never able to get that secure one or two guy. And I think they got that now with Cade. And that that completely changes this restoration that Tori recalls it from being what I believe to be a, like a three to five year restoration to what I now believe is probably around two to three years with Cade. If he's everything that he's built to be, which I believe he's going to be. I think that definitely helps the timeline accelerate a little bit for Pistons. For the sake of completion, the Pistons also had a number of uh, second round draft picks where they chose Isaiah Livers, um, Luca Gaza, and uh, Bolza Kaprovitsa. Um, I guess Livers is the, the guy there, the, the, the local player. He played for Michigan in college. Is there, you know, I, I guess there's a little bit of hype about him just because, or not just because, but you know, in large part because he is a local player. So is there some, some level of excitement that maybe he can be you know, some level of rotation contributor? Yeah, I think Livers is the only one of the three that you should really think could possibly crack the rotation. Uh, I actually think his style, I mean, there was actually an article today that came out. I forget who wrote it or where it came from. I'm sorry. Uh, if you happen to listen to this, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was, but they said that he basically could come down the same path as Sadiq Bey did. And I actually think that's very uh, accurate. I think Livers has the best shot to crack the rotation because the Pistons need shooting, some length, and he has both of those things. And if he can, like, if he can continue to shoot the way he showed that he can in college and in the workouts, obviously heading into the draft, now I definitely think there's a spot for him, possibly in the rotation for him to crack into it, especially with free agency playing out with 
Frank Jackson and Hamadou Diallo both during restricted free agents. You don't know if those two are coming back. I know the Pistons probably do want to bring them both back, but specifically Diallo, he could be a little expensive. So I think there definitely is a way for a liver to become a rotational player. Uh, but the other two, not not so much. I don't think they'll really uh, ever see the court this year. I think they're uh, BG League guys, uh, maybe not even contract guys. I don't know. I don't, I'm not really thinking highly of any of the other two. Yeah, I wouldn't be I think, too highly of those two either. But the Pistons, that's not all they did. They, they drafted Cade Cunning, and that's a huge win. They get the local guy, Isaiah Livers. But... Uh, Troy Weaver was not content just with that. Now, the news has just come out today that they have waived, or yesterday, I don't remember which day it was. Corey Joseph has been waived. He was getting a lot of playing time towards the end of last year after he came across in the trade for D-Line Wright. But perhaps more eye-opening is the trade of Mason Plumley. So the Pistons signed Mason Plumley to a large amount of criticism, I think, last season in the offseason. And then one year in, they've traded him away. But they didn't just trade him away. They traded him away along with pick number 37 to get back pick number 57, which was used on Balsica Pravica. So basically salary dumping Mason Plumley by giving up a high second round pick in the process. Now, if the idea is, well, we just want time for Isaiah Stewart, that's that doesn't pass the sniff test to me because you can just play Isaiah Stewart over Mason Plumley anyway. So what's happening? What are the Pistons creating this cap space for? What What is up? So the Mason Plumley trade definitely, conf- I won't say confused. I, I actually have said for a while that I thought he was going to be traded on draft day to get back into the first round. I thought I thought they were going to be able to package him with the first round pick to a contender, maybe like the Nets or someone who needed a, a big, a veteran big who could play. Make no mistake about it. Mason Plumley had a really good year for the Pistons this past year. I think he had like two or three triple doubles for him. He had a pretty good year for us. So it was kind of shocking that they had to attach a second rounder to just move back and basically have the Charlotte Hornets take Mason Plumley. I'm sure they're happy to have Mason Plumley. They needed a big guy. So I'm sure he's going to fill a void for them. But definitely that was shocking to see that they had to attach a second rounder just to get him basically off the books. Um, you're right to say that that doesn't pass the uh, sniff test about just simply wanting to play Isaiah Stewart. You're right to say that. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of the other rumors. There's also rumors apparently that the Pistons are interested in Tim Hardaway Jr. in free agency, apparently Jermichael Green as well. Um, I, I don't have any insight on this part. This is me more just speculating based on what I've saw, I've seen and what Troy Weaver has shown over the past uh, year and a half of him being the GM. But I, for me, I don't think the Pistons are trying to lose this year. I don't think they're pushing all their chips in by any means. But I also don't think they're pushing all their chips in to lose either. I think they want to be a competitive team this year, actually, if they, pu- if they push into the plan, so be it. But I think they're actually going to try to build like a decent team to where they're not just like sniffing the bottom of the – bottom of the standings anymore um so i wouldn't be shocked if they were cleaning this cap space and i'm actually having keith smith on the podcast later on today to talk about the Pistons' exact cap situation but i wouldn't be shocked if they made some plays in free agency not some big splashes or in the big pond or anything but definitely maybe a new Orleans noel um maybe a tim hardaway jr if they lose out on diallo and frank jackson who knows uh, but yeah i think they definitely moved that cap space so they could specifically make some moves in this season because they could have held on to Mason Plumlee until next year and made a move like this as well. But it seems like they're in a rush to do it right now. It seems like they want to make a move in this free agency. To me, the way that it sort of sort of feels is that they are looking at the impact that Cade can have in year one is very similar to the impact that, say, Luka Doncic had in year one. For Now, you know, I hate comparing those two players, but it's just in terms of you know, if Luka, Luka on Dallas meant that they were going to be too good to get a high draft pick. And Cade, I, I think that Troy might be thinking, well, Cade playing for Detroit along with the development of Stewart and Bay and hopefully Killian Hayes as well, will mean they're going to be too good to get themselves another high draft pick. So let's use this uh, availability of cap space that we can create now to see if we can actually push for the play-in or push for the playoffs and accelerate that timeline. And then by year three, when Kate is really rolling, hopefully, then you are pushing for a top four seed. That's, I, I, that to me is what it feels like. I don't know who they're targeting. I have heard the Tim Hardaway one. Um, and that would obviously help because they do need do need shooting. I said, if Jackson's not there and Diallo's not there and they had Wayne Allington filling that spot so much last year, Dylan Wright played a lot. He's not there anymore. So there is a big opening there and that would make a lot of sense to get some shooting there uh, around uh, around Cade and around Kelly and Hayes as well. So it is going to be really interesting to see what Troy Weaver does have up his sleeve. Koo, you again have got a podcast, as you said, coming today with Keith Smith. That's on Locked On Pistons. People can tune in over there to hear some more detailed explanations of the Pistons cap situation. But thank you for coming on Locked On NBA with me. Absolutely, man. Anytime.